All right, guys, like the title states, we're going to go ahead and look at what happens when you are overspending the alternator. So in front of you, we've got a data log showing our RPM trace and our voltage across the run. Uh, right here is where the run starts, and that's uh, three speed. So, you know, you see the gear changes. But yeah, as we go along, voltage is just falling off 11.4, etc., etc. So you might see this for a little while, and then eventually, you're probably going to destroy the alternator, which is what happened in my case. So what do we do about this? Well, we've got a solution. HoosierPulleys.com. Uh, Joe, local racer of ours, uh, he does a lot of machine work on different parts and stuff. Uh, but one of the things he's offered up for the last few years is these awesome underdrive pulleys. Um, you can reach out to them directly, or they've got a couple sheets on their pages, depending on what kind of pulley you're running. You know, truck pulley, F-body, maybe you've got an underdrive. Um, pulley there it kind of tells you what RPM, what ratio, and what size pulley you need to run. So let me show you. Let me click around here. Got all the another. Here's another example of what he's got going on. But um, he's got you know three inch, three and a half. I think maybe there's a two and a half or so. Um, he's also got some cool. Uh, not only just the alternator pulleys, but also like you can buy like a full set, which is the idler you can get. Uh, power steering pump. Anyways, customize them. Really cool. He's also on Facebook, Hoosier Pulleys. Um, here's a couple photos of all the different ones he's made. So custom engraving for you. There's a picture of the um, power steering pump pulley. Really cool looking. Um, you know, design them like wheels. You can get them plain. You can get them engraved with your you know custom name or whatever you want to say on it. Anyhow, I want to show you guys that as the option uh, of what we need to do. So how are we going to fix this? Well, let's go ahead and pull the alternator. Uh, I'll show you how to swap over the pulley, super easy, install it back in there, and then you'll be good to go. And what you should be seeing in your logs after that is if your alternator is still alive, uh, you should be seeing, you know, 13 across the board. You're going to have a little bit of drop um, from idle. You know, you might have a big fuel pump like I'm running or fans or whatever, but uh, you don't want to see 11.4 because I'll tell you this, uh, track days where I'm making back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back passes, uh, the alternator doesn't stay happy. And we need a happy alternator, we need a happy battery. All of our electronics are good. Get out there and win. Let's get started. Okay, so here's a quick look at the AC Delco unit. Um, this particular one is part number, looks like 888-772-78. That's a GM number on there. Anyhow, um, this is what we got. It's got the spot on the back, two pieces, four pin, and the lug. You can see the factory pulley on here is quite small. And so, like I was explaining about uh, how it works as far as RPM is, if we put a larger pulley on here, it will actually slow down the revolutions of the alternator when you're running higher RPM on the motor. So factory F body, which is the setup I have, if you look down here, it's just sitting down there on the driver's side lower section. So what we need to do first in my instance is go ahead and get the intake tube off running from the intercooler and then we'll go ahead and start taking everything else off the motor. All right, so for my car, it's pretty simple. Um, I've got a 10 millimeter holding this pipe down. From there, um, I've got these killer vibrant clamps that just come right off there. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these, but these vibrant HD clamps, they're, there's just a pin. Push that down. No extra parts. Super simple. Love these. Alright, and then there's the second one down here. You're saved and done. There we go. Pop that one off. There we go. So that's my intake pipe. Just kind of hide everything underneath it. Um, make it look nice and clean. But I might end up getting this powder coated actually. I'm going to set this aside. Alright. So now you can really see the alternator. Now don't get me wrong. It's tucked in there <laughs> next to the exhaust. But you can see our single wire four pin connector. And then so 
I've got a solid tensioner. So on this guy, it's just a 15 millimeter on the back to loosen that up and this will slide off. If you have a standard spring tensioner, uh, it might just be a 15 millimeter also. You can just pull on the wrench and get the belt off. So we'll get that, get that off real quick. Uh, I gotta grab a wrench and then we'll get the belt off and then you guys can see the rest of the process, but super easy. Okay, so everyone's probably gonna have a little bit different belt routing if you still have the power steering pump. It's typically up here, a lot of swaps, maybe your alternator sitting up here. If it's up top, hey, this is gonna be a lot easier. But as far as getting the belt off, kind of the same idea. So 15 millimeter. Oh, we had that boy cranked on there. Ooh, maybe a little too tight. <laughs> Anyways, loosen that up. And then we'll just slide the belt off. Just let it hang down there. There's no reason to take it all the way off. So now we got access to everything going on down here. Let me get you set up and zoom in a little bit. Okay. There's a little tab on this. Sometimes with a screwdriver, it's easy just to pop it up. There we go. If you're not familiar with the different alternator types, this is a four wire. And there's actually, or it's a four pin, but there's actually just one wire. It's an exciter wire. It tells the alternator when to charge. It turns it on and off, essentially. Okay, so then we need, on the back side is our cable going to the alternator to charge it. And I need a socket for that. It's gonna be hard to show you guys where that is, but once the alternator's off, you can see it a little more easily. That should be like a 13 or 14 millimeter. Okay, I've got the battery cable disconnected off the back. Uh, one thing I meant to mention is if you are working on anything electrical in the car, be sure to disconnect it. <laughs> Don't want to arc anything and uh, shock yourself and destroy any kind of electrical components. So now that's off. I've got the ICT bracket. It's very similar to the factory bracket. It's just three bolts. So go ahead and take those out now. And then once that's apart, we'll be able to pull the alternator out. Okay, just like that, the alternator is out. Super easy, not much to it. And just for reference, there's the stud on the back and the four pin connector. So like I said, this pulley actually, this alternator actually does have the larger pulley on it already, but I damaged this um, quite a long time ago. So it's just a backup because it does still charge when I'm just uh, sitting at idle or cruising along, but going down the track, it does not fully charge. So we'll go ahead and get this replaced, get you a comparison of the two, and show you what we're working with. Okay, so here are the two alternators. Um, this is the one that was currently on the car and the new one. Very quickly, you might notice the rear covers um, are different. I believe this is the original F-body cover. It's got like an exhaust vent. Um, this one just has an opening on the back but the stud is in the same spot the four pin connectors in the same spot there is the third mounting point on this one this does come with it but I had to cut it off because it gets in the way of my crossover um, but everything else is the same except you can very quickly see the difference in the pulley so factory pulley is just a little over two inches I think yeah I call it two and a quarter and the pulley that I run for my setup is like a three and a half. So we need to swap these over. You'll need a 24 millimeter socket and an impact, super easy. Now, oh, if I didn't have this on auto, there we go. Just like that, slides right off. Obviously you've got your pulley and Lock washer. Now I want to take a second to talk about this is a pulley from Hoosier Police. Um, local guy to us here in Indiana. He has been making these for a while. Joe, it's fantastic. 
Um, I know there's a few other options out there now, but Joe was kind of one of the first folks to uh, do this for us. It's got the step in it as well to fit properly. So look him up. Uh, Hoosier Police, he's got lots of options that we talked about, um, but this is the one I run on mine. So let's go ahead and get the other one off, and we'll swap them. Like I said, super easy. So that came right off there. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drop that dude back on there. Like that. And I mean, look. <laughs> this one actually fits inside of that one. So significantly larger. Put our lock washer back on. I like to use the nut that was on there. I don't know what the torque spec is on this. I always just tighten it right back down so the paint line matches. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a white dot on both the pulley shaft itself and then also um, the nut. So spin that around. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? The nut from the other one was still on there. There we go. Okay, so we need to go quite a bit. It's getting pretty tight. Make sure it still spins freely, no issues. But swapping the pulley is no big deal. Now, with the factory bracket on an F body, I think I was running into, now that this is larger, it actually brings the belt further down and I was hitting the bolt. So that's why I have the um, ICT bracket. It's skinnier and so the belt doesn't come across and hit the bolt. You may run into that, you may not depending on your situation, but easy enough. So. We'll get this mounted back on, um, go ahead and get the battery back on and our connection, super easy. Uh, for my instance, uh, I do need to cut this off real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and put this dude back on. I just lopped that bracket off. Again, that's just for my setup. So, three bolts. If your setup allows it, uh, obviously you'd have that fourth bracket in the back to stabilize it. So um, you'd have to do that as well. Uh, let's see, we got those four bolts tightened. We'll go ahead and put our connector back in. Just a straight push. And then if I can reach the wire. Yep. Perfect. And actually, this particular alternator is easier to see without the giant um, plastic cover on it. Get that tightened up. And then of course need to reroute the belt. Which on my setup is Super simple. I just have the alternator and the water pump. So we'll grab this. And wherever that 15 wrench went. Who knows? Oh. Almost feels like I could go to a smaller belt. Perfect. So I still need to put my intake tube back on, but I'm gonna go ahead and paint it or maybe even just send it out to get powder coated. Uh, so I'm not gonna put it back on right now, but your setup will be a little bit different. Um, and then I need to tighten the nut on the back of the alternator, but super easy. So hopefully that helps explain if you're running into kind of voltage issues and before you destroy the alternator like I did, go ahead and get that pulley on there. Um, check out Hoosier pulleys. The pulley that you saw on mine is just a blank. It's just a standard black 
um, coated, but he does offer some pretty neat special engravings. You can put whatever you want. Actually, if you look at my idler pulley, um, that's an example of the engraving. It says uh, Joe Warren Racing's buddy of mine, um, so I've got his pulley on there, but Joe will pretty much build anything you want. He also has like three-piece sets for the idler, the alternator, and the power steering, so pretty cool stuff. Um, really, any, any way you want it, lots of different size options. So if you're not sure, check out, um, he, I think he's on Facebook, and he'll go through and explain which one you need. Also, you can reach out to him directly. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that helps explain what you need to do, which one you should pick, and to keep your alternator from dying so you don't have any problems charging going down the track or just driving in general. So if you like this video, be sure to check out one of these videos as well, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.